Hi kids! Welcome to another episode of Butter and Salt. I'm Krista McLemore, and that's Kevin. And we've got a bit of a different format for you because if you watched the live stream on Saturday, you'll know, actually a week ago Saturday, because this is coming out on Sunday, you'll know that we are moving. So everything's kind of in a shambles and I am not able to do all the normal setup. So you're gonna get us in a little different format. Um, but as promised on Instagram and Facebook, I am doing the avocado toast with elotes, I think that's how you say it, elotes? Elote. Salad, um, I think it's called something else when it's the salad and not the actual corn on the cob, so don't quote me on that, I don't know. I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly. I probably am just in a very white accent. Anyway, we're gonna do three avocados because it's just the two of us. Um, the last several batches of avocados I've timed just right and they've been amazing. So hopefully for camera we get these ones going as well. So let's see. I'm gonna just cut it in half. Twist it. Oh look at that. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Twist it. Take it out. Two more. Dos más. Half, yeah. And then this one. them. I'm going to cut them just in little strips. Never do this while holding it in your hand. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> because you never know how sharp your knife is nor how thin the skin is and you could very easily go through the skin and cut yourself open. So I mean if you want to risk it don't say I didn't warn you. How about that? Um, so just Take the extra second to put it on a cutting board. This will make the mashing portion of this project a lot easier if we already have them cut up into cubes. Now you could also do this like other people do avocado toast where you just slice it out and then arrange it on your toast in beautiful deli layers. Um, or you could do like we do and practically make guacamole I just don't put any guacamole seasoning. Now you could put guacamole seasoning. You could, um, I've done avocado toast with a dash of everything bagel seasoning on top of it. That was pretty tasty. You get the onion and the sesame seeds. So sorry, dad, not that one for you, but we could make you a special, a special mix of everything bagel minus the seeds. <laughs> feels a shame to cut into these when they're just so pretty. I don't know how many this would make for a normal person, but for us it makes two pieces of toast each. Three avocados. Um, and typically his is a little heavier than mine. I'm gonna yeah, grab a baby. spoon. <laughs> Get this. And we're just gonna scoop out around yeah, just get as much of that avocado goodness as you can. See how thin that is? I was able to cut through it. If I had that in the palm of my hand, it very easily could have gone through. There's my finger. So, probably a good idea to just, you know, avoid the hospitals right now. <laughs> just saying. Do I need to focus? Okay. 
Sometimes when you cut, you get the little nub that's on the outside. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So I just try to not put that in there. Otherwise, you could, if you feel like you missed one, you could always um, turn it into a fun little game of, you know, hey, whoever gets the hard nub of the avocado gets to pick dessert. <laughs> Yay! What's feels, for dessert? Feels a lot like uh, Girl Scout camp, where if you had the, if you if you had the fork and spoon or the ketchup, if the ketchup was in front of you, then you were on KP duty and had to collect all the dishes and take them to the sink. <laughs> Love the ketchup. Well, everybody got wise the next night and moved the ketchup, but the next night it was something different. It was that there was something under your chair or your silverware was backwards, or, and every night was different, so you never knew what to expect. <laughs> Looking forward to giving you guys a new kitchen tour when we have that. And you have to see these cute little things that Kevin made me. Look at that, for my salt and pepper grinders. So we just pick this up and go to the table. Or if I'm over here and it's over there, I can grab the whole thing and I have both at once. I mean, first world problems, but it's great. So I'm just going to season lightly with some salt and pepper in this. Because we're going to have a lot of flavor in the um, elote salad. That I don't want to make it overpowering with seasoning. Um, but like I said, if you like the complex flavors of like guacamole, um, you can... You can certainly make this into guacamole if you want. We like this on the chunkier side, so I just give it kind of a good mash. Um, but it's mostly still chunks. Chunky monkey. Chunky monkey. So we have fresh corn here. Um, I think this makes it the best, but I can see in times like this where you're trying to use more pantry ingredients, you could probably use canned corn. Um, and just what we're gonna do is we're gonna just char the crap out of it. <laughs> so I would say probably if you're gonna use canned corn, make it as dry as possible, you know, drain it, put it in a paper towel, um, make it dry. That'll help it crisp a little. Last time I made this, I, I left a few of these little silks in there, and I didn't. I did not like when I found those. <laughs> now, the last time I did this, I did not. Um, I don't think that's gonna work. Close your eyes. <laughs> You can put this in a bunt pan and shave it down and it'll catch into the little bunt and you put the tip in the hole. Mm, don't say that. You put the corn on the cob in the hole of the bunt pan and you, you slice it down and then you have a peak to put it in and then you have something to catch it. Be very careful if you're doing it my way because you don't want to hit your, you don't want to dull your blade and your, in your pan, but you also don't want to scratch up your pan. It's a thing, but Roll with me here. So I'm just gonna cut it down. I'd never done this before last time, so I went a little too deep um, with my cutting and I got some cob in there. There we go. So you don't have to go quite as aggressive on the corn as I did. And this is just obviously straight off the, um, out of the husk it's not parboiled or anything makes it really quick and easy if you're not recording a show um, this didn't take very long the other night and this turns into a full meal for us we don't normally we don't pair it we haven't paired it with other things That's two corn ears, ears of corn. 
And I'm pretty sure I was supposed to melt some butter first. So. <laughs> you can take it out. Yeah. Don't show the mess I'm making. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna melt some butter. I'm gonna say about two tablespoons. Oh. The other one thing I didn't do last time um, that I'm gonna do this time is when the corn is almost done, I'm gonna throw in some minced garlic. I already have this. Oh, I have this minced garlic in a jar. Very convenient. I love it. Um, just cause. I really should get the lighthouse stuff because I love that even more and it lasts even longer. Um, but I just happened to be standing next to that when I was like, oh, I need garlic and I grabbed it. It's really hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. Am I crowding my pan? Yeah, I probably should have used a bigger one but it's in the dishwasher. The dishwasher's done. So really I could have used it. Oh man, damn here so everything gets a little buttered. And this is going to take about six to ten minutes total. Um, so I'm going to let it sit here and really just blister on that one side. Then I'm gonna give it a good toss so more blister side is up and the other side is getting some more love um, about halfway through. And then I'm gonna toss in some garlic and then we'll top on our toast. So we've got a nice char on both sides. I would say if you could do this in a cast iron skillet that would make it really scorching hot. Then you'd get an even better like char on it because um, I think that's a that brings out a lot of the flavors. So if you can do that, um, I just didn't have my cast iron ready to go. I threw in a, about a mm, half a teaspoon of garlic because this is such a small bowl and I knew how fragrant and flavorful it was going to be. I didn't need to add too much. Um, now we're going to add some mayonnaise. <laughs> about a quarter of a cup. I don't want it too much. Um, and then at this point, I also throw in some chili powder, but not too much because we're gonna top it off with some chili powder. So I'm gonna sprinkle it on. Not too much. Okay, perfect. I would say that's probably about eighth of a teaspoon. Just a, just a smidge. A hint of heat. A hint of heat. If you want, during that cooking process, you could also do some jalapenos. I just don't have any. Um, but I thought of that as an addition, and I was like, ooh, that would be good. Uh, but alas, I thought of it too late. Luckily, this won't be the last time I make this. No. Because he liked it. All right, we're going to toast up some bread. I'm going to do a light salt and pepper. All right. Here's one. Here's two. Get the other going. Buckle my shoe. Um, at this point, you could put on some more butter, but if you do it the way that I recommend, you don't have to. Um, Having that chunkier bread typically is smaller diameter, so this piles on really high. That's our problem. Okay, I'm gonna take some of this elotes salad, pile it on as well. This would be really fancy for like a summer picnic or a summer barbecue that if you're bringing appetizers to your friend's place, you could do like little crostinis of it. Oh, fancy. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, now we're gonna take our 
cotija cheese. Easy for you to say. Uh-huh. We're just gonna take it. We're gonna take a big chunk of it. And it just kind of crumbles off. This is for Kathy because she was asking. And you can just literally crumble it in your hand. I love this stuff. Very mild in flavor. <laughs> now we're just going to sprinkle the crap out of it with chili powder. Because that's kind of what elotes look like. It's corn on the cob, slathered in mayonnaise with cotija cheese and chili powder on it. At this point, you can put your soap lettuce on it if you want to, but I don't because it tastes like soap. It was sexy and you know it. <laughs> All right, so there you go. This is avocado toast with a lote salad that has uh, cotija cheese and some chili powder on top. Garnish with soap lettuce. I'm gonna probably sprinkle on a little Mexican oregano and we'll be good. I hope you enjoy. And let me know in the comments if, you, if you've tried it. If you like this episode, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel. While you're there, go ahead and click the little bell that's saying you wanna be notified every time we do one of these, which we're shooting for about one a week. Um, and if you haven't yet, check out our other channel that we're just starting for all of our adventures in the trailer hood. <laughs> Uh, all right. Have a good day. We'll see you later. Tell the apple joke. <laughs> Wait, what was it? What's loud? Uh -huh. What's loud and sounds like apples? I don't know. What is loud and sounds like apples? You're so loud. Oh, what is loud and sounds like apples? <laughs> Say it with a normal voice. What's loud and sounds like apples? Apples! <laughs> I saw that on Sorted and I lost my... <laughs> Clean as you go.